Okay, so I don't want to show this cool way of doing object avoidance, and I'm using the old code from uh, the previous pathfinding video and just adding the enemy object avoidance to that. Um, and this is the type of behavior that you're going to see with this type of object avoidance. So previously, the enemies would just clump up into one, and that's really not that exciting when you have like pathfinding. Um, and this is a more like interesting way of uh, showing the pathfinding and showing like enemies or what, whatever you want it to be uh, going around and really uh, seeing like how they do like these different routes and uh, different ways of finding the pathfinding, how we set it up. Um, it just gives more variety and a more interesting look to the game. So yeah, uh, in this example here, there are 200 objects or like 200 enemies moving around. And up here, I have the frame rate showing. So it's a pretty steady 60 frames. Um, and we'll talk more about the limitations of this later on. Uh, yeah, real quickly, I wanted to show uh, some, adjustment, some adjustments I made to the previous pathfinding implementation um, to get this to work properly. Uh, so previously, the node would just set its node weight to 200 whenever it's colliding with the wall or there's a wall in its place. Um, instead, at the end, we just destroy this object now uh, to prevent like confusion in the OBJ enemy object. And in the past binding, we need to update this too um, because it's assuming that every instance exists. So now, you know, in the reset, we have node equal to node grid X and Y. Uh, we have to do an additional check here and check if the instance exists, so if the node in instance exists. And down here, when we're uh, calculating the adjacent node, we also have to do an instance uh, exists check with the adjacent node. And if that's not the case, uh, here what I did is just delete it from the adjacent node and uh, do I minus minus and continue. You could also do the same thing up here where like you just skip this entirely, but this is the implementation I did. So here's the OBJ enemy. And it, it's essentially a totally different object. Uh, everything's just changed up. So to start in the create, you have DIR uh, for direction, the speed, the X and Y, the target X and target Y, um, and the player. So these are just set to default values. So the DIR is just random 360, this one actually be used. And the speed, this is a, this one does get used. It's between four and eight uh, randomly. And the collision radius, it's set to the sprite width divided by two. So um, an important note here is to get this to work, you do need a sprite attached to the object because it will be doing uh, circle collision, and that requires the object that's colliding with to have a collider, um, so it needs a sprite attached to it. So for this, just a 20 by 20 um, pixel image of a circle. Um, so that's why it's sprite width divided by two, but you can adjust this to whatever you need. So first here, we choose the player that we're going towards, and for this one, we don't actually move towards the player, we just move towards the node that's nearest to the player. So node is equal to instance nearest, nearest x and y, and obj node, uh, parent node. And if node not equal to pointer null, then player is equal to node. Um, and here's the moving towards directions, um, pretty basic too. It's just direction is equal to point direction x, y, player x, player y. And the target X is X plus length DIR, DIR X of speed and direction. And same thing for Y, or for the target Y. Um, and now we do the check to see if that movement towards um, the target X, target Y would cause a collision with the wall. And if that's not, if it doesn't collide with the wall, then we set the X and Y equal to target X and target Y. Now we also want to make sure uh, that it doesn't collide. And this is where um, everything happens pretty much in these like few, just like 15 or so lines. Um, so we check the collide object and that's equal to the collision circle X, Y, 
uh, this collision radius, which we set previously in the create, um, and then OBJ enemy, uh, and just zero and one. Um, so it doesn't count the actual object. Um, and what this will return is a instance within that circle that it's colliding with that is OBJ enemy. And that's exactly what we want. So if, it, if, if any objects are colliding with us in that circle, we want that instance and we want to know that it's colliding. So it's just, that's the one that we're colliding with um, another enemy. And we set count equal to zero. Um, so here's the while loop where we actually do the avoidance. Um, so first we check if the collide object is not equal to no one, which means that we are colliding with something. And then we also check uh, that count is less than 15. Now, this additional check is important because there, there's instances where no, in order to not be colliding with an object anymore, this, these, this code needs to be run uh, many more times than just 15. But if we allow that, then when we have a lot of objects, like say 100 or 200, then that would start really hurting the performance of the game. And here we're basically saying, you know, we want the avoidance to work and we want it to be uh, good enough, but we don't want it to be so accurate that it bogs down the game. And that's kind of where um, you, you kind of have to think about how many objects you want on your screen and how efficient you want this to be or how accurate you want it to be rather. Um, and kind of weigh out the options of uh, how how you want this count to be. So the higher this count is, the more accurate it's going to be. Um, but likewise, it's going to bog down your game more the more objects you have. So first off, we increase the count, and after this, we just get the avoid direction. So that direction would be the direction from your x and y to the collided object, their x and y, and then increase that increase that direction by 180 because we want to be we want to be moving away from that collided object um, and the avoid x same thing as like that we did up here just x plus length drx of one avoid direction and for y it is the same thing as x just y plus length drry of one and avoid direction now we want to do this additional check to check if the position meeting at avoid x and avoid y would collide with an obj wall. And we do this check because uh, above all, we don't want the object to be colliding with the wall. Uh, we, we don't want that to happen. So we do the extra collision and then we set x equal to avoid x and y equal to avoid y if that collision is false or if that place meeting, I guess, is false and we aren't colliding with the wall. And now we set the collide object equal to collision circle x, y, and collision radius obj enemy 0 and 1, uh, just like before. And we run this while loop again. Um, so we use that for the collision object next time. And that's how we get this here. So you can see uh, I just wrote a little um, script to create all these objects. That's why they are created in the same area. But right after they get created, they separate from each other. And you can see this cool avoidance behavior happening here. Um, so right now there's 200 objects and it's at 60 frames. And we could stress this, stress test this and see how far we can get with this. So if you go over here where I have my enemy spawner, I just check how many instances there are and I just increase or I just spawn them based on that. Um, so if we increase this to 300, so they're all spawned in the same spot and you can see it's a little bit less and once they or when they spawn that's usually when you're going to get the lowest frame rate because there's a lot of collisioning happening right there. So there's a lot of uh, um, calculations that need to be done to separate from each other. Um, but once you're moving, that's when you'll see less of that because 
they don't have to worry so much about colliding with each other um, or the collisions that do happen are less often because you're moving towards uh, something. So they're all spread out. So even with 300, we still get pretty good frame rate. Um, but if you stop here and wait for them to all clump up, you can see it dropping down to the 40s. Um, but for 300 objects, this is pretty good. Um, now we increase it to 400. Now with 400 objects, we should be seeing it start to uh, slow down a bit. So you can see it's at around like in the 30s and 40s. Um, and this is expected right now because it's at the very beginning, but even when we get uh, to moving around, so now we can get like around 50 once we're moving. Um, and once we stop and they all clump up again, we get down to the 30s. So it starts bogging down a lot as you keep going, um, but it's still, it's, it's able to run pretty fine for the most part um, with 400 objects. It was just pretty good, I think, uh, to get this behavior and have them not colliding or, yeah, I guess going through any of the wall objects. So now with 500, um, it's kind of interesting. It's not bogging down too much at the beginning. Okay, now we get down to 30s. Um, yeah, it's dropping down to like 20. So here it's getting pretty unplayable if you were to have 500 objects on the screen, but um, you start getting to the point of where, you know, it's uh, it's more dependent on how you design the game and what you want the gameplay to be like. Um, so once again, like once it's moving, if we get it to all like separate and start moving here, um, the frame rate goes up. Oh, it's still at the 30s, but the frame rate goes up once it's uh, moving and it doesn't have to worry so much about like separating these objects. Um, so you could take that and have like, say, maybe 200 objects are over here and they don't start moving and checking uh, until you're close enough and 200 objects are over here. You know, you could separate these out and if you want to have these, any, these many objects into one room, um, be smart about how you want to do this. Or you could have, say, you know, two different types of enemies that do collision with each other, uh, but they don't do collision with all other types of enemies. Um, you know, there, there's ways of doing it. Now, if you need more objects on your screen than this, uh, if you need more than like 500 plus, there's ways to optimize this and make it more efficient. Uh, for instance, I, I believe while loops are less efficient than for loops, um, just in terms of like how they get calculated. So you can convert it to a for loop. Uh, there's other like small tweaks that you could do to get the most performance out of it. Um, but if you really do need like, you know, a thousand instance or a thousand objects on your screen at once, then uh, something to look into might be, you know, something like voids or uh, a different type of object avoidance or, you know, this kind of flock behaving pattern. Now with voids, I haven't seen too many void tutorials on Game Maker, so that might be something I do later on. Um, but for now, I hope this was useful and, you know, just cool to look at. And yeah, see ya.